everybody, it's Connie again with the Artisan Company. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here. Today it is 75 degrees outside here at my house. Woo I am so excited. But before I go out and enjoy the weather, I'm going to shoot a tutorial for you guys on a basic bone earring, a Native American style or Southwestern style bone earring. Both men and women can wear it. It has a few embellishments so that it'll be brought into this century. So let's go get started. Well, guys, I guess we are ready to get started on this beautiful <laughs> Southwestern or Native American style necklace done with this beautiful stone. Oh my. <laughs> Remember we said uh, Tibetan turquoise and look at this. Wow we does this not knock your eyes out. Look at the color of those stones. Man oh man was I excited when I got these and I thought oh wow what I thought I was going to do I changed my mind and I shifted. So we're going to do a another southwestern project today something a little different because we're going to work with horse hair. <laughs> so you need, uh, these are large hole beads right here. Let me set these over here so I'll have a little bit of space. Um, but they are large hole beads. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, maybe, but they're large holes. So you'll need a large hole bead. Now, I'm going to run through these beads really fast because <laughs> there's a lot of them. Uh, so, but you can take this particular design and, and ramp it any way you want to. You don't have to use any of these beads. It doesn't matter, but this is just something that was on my heart and I thought I'm going to do this. All right. So, uh, the large hole, these are eight millimeter, these screen ones. This is a copper large hole, eight millimeter size bead. These are brass, uh, seven millimeter large hole beads. Then I have some silver tone <laughs> and I think these are a six millimeter large hole bead. These are a five millimeter fairly small hole bead but pretty small it's not a large hole then these are four millimeter copper and silver tone beads four millimeter and the hole in this is um it's not a huge hole but it's not itty bitty either it's not like you can get things through it maybe a one millimeter size okay these beads right here <laughs> they are my mystery bead they are between a four and a five millimeter so it's anybody's guess it's between a four and a five uh the holes are fairly small on those okay then um these right here are crimp covers and they are a five millimeter size crimp cover these are going to be some of my finishing beads on the back and it's copper and these are about an eight millimeter hole in the middle it's a large hole it's about an eight millimeter uh, i've got to make sure the leather will go through there i have some carved black carved bone and I think that's about, it's an inch, almost an inch and, well, let me get back down here again. Yeah, it's about an inch and uh, two quarters size. And this is carved. You can use anything you want. Uh, a buffalo horn is always beautiful. Antiqued bone is always beautiful. Um, but in this case, because the green was so vibrant, I decided I wanted to do something that would just, the contrast would be off the chart. So I'm using black. This is a two inch uh, tin cone. 
that is used in a lot of the uh, Native American or Southwest styles. And um, they are used on the dresses uh, for the women's dance called the jingle uh, dance or jingle dress dance. And I talked about this in the lariat when I did the lariat necklace. I talked about the tradition behind this. Um, so we're using a two inch one today. It's pretty large and it's kind of a gold color. Okay, you will need uh, some leather. This is a three millimeter. This is deer hide, three millimeter in its size. Then you'll need some more leather, but this is a different kind. This is like a cowhide, but it's a two millimeter. And I'm using about, and it's kind of a bronze color. I don't know if you can see that shimmery to it or not, but it's really pretty. It's kind of got a shimmer. And I've uh, cut off about 24 inches worth because this is a long necklace. Then I have a one millimeter size, kind of a fabric, cottony fabric type um, string here. And I'm going to use that for these little tiny beads when I get down here to do the cone part. And I cut off maybe 12 inches of this, maybe. Same with the deer hide, maybe 10 to 12 inches of that you'll need. Um, the other thing that I am using is sinew, an artificial sinew like this. Um, I've already got some cut. I hate to have anything go to waste. So I'm going to pull some of this out. And uh, you'll need a piece about uh, 10 inches long, maybe, of artificial sinew. Or you can also use this that we were talking about earlier, this little one millimeter fabric type. Uh, stuff you can use that as well okay and the biggest thing you're going to need is the horse hair <laughs> i'm gonna pick this up carefully all right and this is actual real horse hair um it's used in a lot of uh, native american or southwest styles and we're going to use a plug of this today to do the bottom of the necklace and when we get to where we're going i'll show you how to do that uh, but for right now oh and you need one more thing a little jump ring of some kind this is an oval one because i thought it would work better uh, inside this little cone it just kind of uh, helps you be able to pull everything up tight okay so the first thing we are going to do is go get some water I'll be back. <laughs> okay, I have wet my whistle, and now we're going to start the beading process. Um, okay, so I'm going to knot some of this uh, bronzy colored leather. It's going to be knotted. So when you do knots, um, you need to account for, depending on how tight, the knot's going to be and how large your leather is, you need to account for um, either a quarter of an inch to a half an inch um, for each knot that you're going to be doing within your design. Uh, I'm going to estimate mine's going to be about a quarter inch, so, and I knew how many knots I was going to do, so I estimated that much more when I cut my uh, leather. All right, so in usual fashion, you want to make sure that you put something down here to catch your beads so they don't go flying off when you're beading. And what I'm going to do first for you guys who like to watch the beading process, uh, I'm going to go down this side first because I um, got it in a place where it's uh, vulnerable to rolling <laughs> because I'm not using a... Uh, I'm not using a bead board, but a bead board is great for those of you who like to use them. Um, I have used them in the past, but for some reason, I just keep going back to my piece of leather. That's how I was taught, and I just, 
I can't seem to break away from it and I'm okay with it. So, <laughs> okay. And the other thing you're going to notice, I'm doing a progression of the turquoise. I'm doing three here, four here, five here, and there's eight down here. So I'm doing a progression of turquoise. So we're going to string this and because these are large hole, you know, this is a pretty easy process right here. Okay. And my bead, my little bead crimp here, I'm going to skip that for the moment. I'm just going to go straight down this side. And I laid my pattern out, I laid my pattern <laughs> out ahead of time just to save time uh, for the video but um, that's why it's all laid out already and then we'll keep moving here and the uh, this black bone is just I love it and this Tibetan turquoise oh my goodness the color, I don't know if the color comes through on the video or not, and I'm sure whenever I uh, shoot it for the storefront to put it in the shop, it's going to be a trick to know whether or not the color is going to be as vivid as it is here. But, oh goodness, it's just, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. All right, let me, oops, let me turn this one. Maybe this one will go through this way. And occasionally you may have to ream out, um, you know, one of your pieces of bone or horn or whatever it is you're using. Sometimes you have to ream those out because they'll have a little edge on the inside that will catch uh, your leather or your sinew, whatever you're using, or your, you know, bead stringing material of whatever kind it is all right so i'm down here on the end on this side and let me pull all these down okay i will switch oh boy 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 look at this this is going to be dynamite i just Oh my, I just cannot wait. Ah, it makes my heart sing. <laughs> okay, so let me move some of these down just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to clamp that right there. And this one I'm clamping on this end just so I'll know where the bottom is. Okay, and so since this is the bottom right here, I'm going to start on the bottom here, stringing. So let's go this way. Love this, love this, love this, love this. Oh my, I'm so excited. Oh my goodness, the last several projects that I have been working on for you guys. I'm telling you what, I have just been thrilled to death about how they've turned out. <laughs> and the stones have just been so beautiful. It makes me so excited. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. But it doesn't take much for me. <laughs> I'm easily entertained. <laughs> I am easily entertained. Oh my. You can see how fast these large hole beads go when you start stringing them. They just zoom past. All right, don't hang up on me. I checked you earlier to make sure you worked, and you did. All right, here's one of these ones. I may have to ream out. It was working earlier. 
I try to check those things before I get started on something. All right, what's it catching? All right, here's going to be one of those examples. Let me get my little reamer out here. I may, yep. I'm just going to work on the inside of it just a little bit because it may just be some little something in there. And of course, with bone and hard stuff like this, you don't have to be so careful as you do when you're working with very delicate stones like emeralds and things like that because they will crack on you when you're doing this. But turquoise will crack as well. So, all right, let me see if this helps. If not, I'll have to get a bigger one. I just blew it out. <laughs> if you're wondering what that sound was. Come on, guy. Right. He's not wanting to be cooperative right now. Oh, why is it stopping? It goes halfway and it stops. All right, let me ream a little bit more. Let me get a bigger one. See, this is the joys of live stuff <laughs> it's the live thing all right let's see what happens here come on baby you can do it you can do it all right let me try this end Sometimes this stuff just, you know, you're just rolling along and all of a sudden it just decides it's going to do have a mind of its own. Now let me try it and see. God, it's still hanging. What the heck? Well, bloody da okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take the time to ream this thing out really good and i'll be back so y'all go get a coffee <laughs> we'll be back in just a minute i don't want you to, have to sit here and watch this so be back in a second all right we got that piece of bone whipped in line <laughs> took me a minute it was a little cantankerous <laughs> okay so i've got him on i'm gonna continue on here hope you guys had a good coffee break <laughs> Oh, all right. Let's keep going. We're back here on the tail end of this pattern. It beads, the four count of the beads. I love working with large hole beads because they're just so much easier to do. But for those of you guys who do the seed bead work, oh my goodness, kudos to you guys. I've done a little bit of that. And it is very, uh, can be very tedious, but with anything, if you absolutely love it, it's not. So, you know, some, uh, we all have our different giftings and things. All right, so this is where I'm at. I'm at the end of the top of the other p other side now. And what I'm going to do is I'm planning on uh, moving this now where I'm evening, in, evening it up. Making it even on both sides. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm getting ready to go on vacation and I can tell that I need a break. <laughs> so, so I've got both ends of the the leather here together and i'm pulling this down and i'm making all the beads even now is what i'm doing so i want everything to kind of even up before i put in my silver accents so i'll know where i'm going without uh, losing any of the space that needs to be in there Okay, so I've got that all 
One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. I'm going to move this. Now we're cooking with some gas right here. All right, so right there is where my uh, cone is going to go. I'm making sure that my pattern is correct on both sides before I move on. Yes, it is. Okay, so I'm going to put a little clamp right there on this end. And I'm putting a little clamp on this other end. There it is. So that my beads don't slide off going that way. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start down on this end and I will start adding my little silver. I'm taking my crimp covers, believe it or not, just like I did in the Lariat a few weeks ago. It just adds some sparkle. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going back in between each piece of bone right there is going to be a crimp cover. So I've pushed the uh, piece of bone out of the way just enough that I can get that crimp cover in there. And I'm pushing it all the way down as far in there as I can. And then closing it up. Need a magnifying glass for this. All right, there we are. Right there. So that's what it looks like. Just a little touch of silver right in there in the middle of all the gold and green and copper. All right. So what I'm going to do is alternate each side as I'm going up doing this. So I'm pushing that out just enough that I can get that crimp cover in there. Let me do this too because I've got something that's going to go right here in this middle. So I'm putting a little tiny crimp right there as well so that I don't lose that space in that bottom section down there. When we put the cone on, I don't want to lose that space. All right, here we go. And when you're putting these on, if you will uh, put the crimp on, uh, pushing towards the bottom and not towards the top because if you if you gauge it by this you'll be off you'll have some space in there and that's not what you want so you want to make sure that this pushes down flush to the beads going to, towards the bottom versus the top a magnifier down here so I can see and remember, we were talking about the crimp covers, making sure that uh, you get it where it's uh, flush right here so that it doesn't rub on anything. All right, there's number two, moving right along. Give me just enough space right there next to that piece of bone. Put the cover on flush to the bone. Close it up. Oops. And you can go back and tweak them once you get it set. All right, a little space. Just enough right there. Whoops. I'm going to put it on flush to the bone. Flush to whatever it is you're trying to flank there to accent. There we go. 
it's mine and my husband's anniversary coming up so we're getting ready to take a little vacay and i'm so excited All right, so this one's going to be flush to the brass bead because remember, we're making sure it's flush going down the necklace, not going up. You want it being flush going down. So this time it's going to be flush to the brass. That's where the, that's the next section in line. All right, over here on this side. This one's going to be flush to the brass on this side as well. All right, I think you get the gist of what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off the the other one, two, three, four, five, six beads here, and then I'll get back with you and we'll work on the horse hair. Okay, we are back. <laughs> and if the so sound sounds different, it's because the microphone quit working. So anyway, bear with me. What we're doing here is I've got it all beaded at this point. Look at this Tibetan turquoise. Is it not amazing? Oh my, it's so beautiful. And the carved pieces of bone. Got all of this threaded on the sinew. I have mixed my metals and it's kind of a signature thing I do anyway, but I decided to mix the metals to bring out the blacks and the greens um, equally because I just wanted both of them to be seen equally. Um, somebody might ask, can I just use a silver bead instead of a crimp cover? Because I used crimp covers. Yes, you can do that. Um, just make sure if you're using leather that your crimp doesn't uh, clip your leather. Make sure your crimp's big enough to cover the piece that you're working on. Um, otherwise, you got a disaster because you're going to clip your leather. But anyway, yes, you can use silver beads. Okay, so now what we're doing is, I'm um, remember, I've got to tie the cone on the bottom here, so I've got to leave a gap there. I've got a piece of deer hide. I've got a piece of cotton cord. And I've got a piece of sinew. Now the sinew, uh, remember, we want to make it a thread like we did before. I don't know if you watched the embossed leather bracelet video, but it looked like this before we started. It's flat and thin. So you want to make it into a piece of thread. Let me set that over there. Okay, so I'm taking it between my two fingers and I'm just curling it. This one's already been done, but I'm just showing you the technique again. Um, I do this to make a thread out of it, especially if I'm going to do a lot of stitching on something. Um, Makes it look fantastic. So go all the way to the end. And there we go. And you can see it makes it thin and extremely durable. All right, here's the beads I'm using. These are four millimeter. There's some bone here. I'm gonna show you where we're going. This is kind of where we're headed for this. Uh, you've got the deer hide at the top. That's where it's going to be tied on to the necklace. Here's our uh, accent bead. This is the cone. Obviously the horse hair. Uh, when I flip it over here, let me see here. Okay, so you've got uh, the carved bone to pull the motif into the bottom. Some copper and silver tone beads and some turquoise. Alrighty. This is where we're heading. It's kind of what it's going to be looking like. Set that there. Okay, the cone. This is about a two inch, maybe two and a half inch cone. It is rolled. You can see one end's bigger than the other. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller by uh, kind of rolling it in. The original cones were made out of... Um, tobacco lids that were round and so it kind of gives you this curve on the bottom of it 
Uh, so when you're rolling it, just notice your curve may get more um, pronounced, so to speak. So let me curve this here. It takes a little bit of effort to do. I'm going to wipe off my fingerprints off of it. Make sure that it doesn't, the oils on my hands don't uh, change any of the color and it makes it shiny too. All right, we're going to set that there. All righty, here we go. We're getting ready to uh, do the horsetail part. So let me move all this out of the way and get my horse hair. All right, here's the horse hair I'm using. And uh, it is real. <laughs> so, uh, I'm taking a needle or something sharp, maybe this stick. It doesn't matter as long as it has something where you can go in between the hairs. And you want to separate out how much ever you're going to use. So I'm just going to grab a little small bundle. You can see I'm trying to get the needle through there so it'll pull apart. Yep. Just gently pull it out. And there we go. Okay, so I have the part I'm going to use for the decorative tail on the end. Let me lay that down right there. I'm going to grab this and let me uh, tie this off. Give me just a second. I'm going to tie this off so I can get it off the desk because if you drop it, horse hair goes everywhere. <laughs> we don't want that. So give me just a second here. All right, let me clear off all the little danglies that come out as you're working with it. So now we're going to pull out the extra hair that's out of what we pulled out. So you're just going to just continue to pull out what's loose and dangling, but hold on to it really tight at the top. It's like hair of any kind, it crawls. So just know that when you're working with it. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to make a loop or an opening at the top. And I cannot express how important it is to hold tight. There's the little loop right there. And that is going to be uh, for your jump ring, if you're going to use that, which that's what I'm using on this one. Or you can use a piece of leather to go through there. Uh, either way is fine, but make sure that you keep that loop at the top. I'm taking my sinew now and I'm wrapping it at the top extremely tight. And I mean, I am pulling it really tight. I don't know if you can see the pressure on my fingers or not, but I am pulling it really tight. And so wrap it several times and then you're going to do just a basic overhanded knot on the top. Nothing special, just an overhanded knot. So here's my first pass right there. Okay, and that just, I mean, pull it tight, guys. Make my second pass, and that makes the first knot. I'm going to do one more just for safety measure. All right, so I've got that tied off. Let me make sure my loop is still in there. Yes, it is. There it is right there. And I'm opening it up a little bit more because like I said earlier, horse hair crawls just like human hair does. Okay, so we're going to clip off the excess right there. And get your trusty lighter right there. And you're going to burn off the excess right here that you uh, have left to seal the knot on the top. Remember we did this in a couple of other videos as well. Just to seal the knots, I'm letting it burn down. Pressing it with my finger. Now, if your tender finger, see that comes off right there because that's the waxy part. It does burn. 
So if you're tender fingered, you may want to be careful doing this. It does burn. So I'm going to go ahead and seal off a little bit more there because it needed just a touch. All right. Turn it. And then I'm going to just kind of gently touch the rest of it so that it kind of seals the, the waxy part of the sinew. Let me wipe my hand off here for a second because I have the sticky on there. All right. So here we go. We got our tail wrapped. We got a loop at the top. So the next thing we're going to do, got a crazy hair there, I'll be back. Well, here we go. Let me get my little beads put together out here. And uh, this is about a one millimeter cotton cord that I'm using here to tie on the decorative part of the beads. I am going to tie it on to this piece of horse hair and um, horse hair does have a mind of its own, so kind of go with the flow with it, whatever direction it's going. Let me tie this. I'm just doing a basic overhanded knot, nothing fancy, because it's not going to be seen anyway. So pull it really tight. And let me do another one. Real tight. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is double that. I always do two most of the time, whether it's sinew or any kind of cord like this. I usually do two overhanded knots just for security. And there's a little knot there. So I'm going to uh, grab some glue. You can use a E6000. You can use a jeweler's glue or you can use a super glue but make sure if you're doing super glue which is what i'm doing right here that you use the gel do not use the super runny or you'll have a mess on your hands i'm just using a little bit of a dot on it just to secure that knot so it doesn't slip i'm going to dot it with my finger to kind of spread it around wipe my finger off so i don't glue my finger to the horse hair blow it for a minute <laughs> oh my goodness okay so I've got even pieces of thread on each side this is where I'm going with that just so you can see uh, I've got silver and copper on one on each side I alternate the colors instead of uh, making it all one color for interest now it's yours if you want to do all silver you can the cotton cord on the end can fray sometimes so i wet the end just a little bit and twisted it these are about a four millimeter bead with a large hole um, let me twist that just a little more because when it starts to fray just a hair just gently just mash it um, and wet it. I usually just, you know, wet it with my lip and it'll keep going. Or you can do with a little tiny bit of spot of water. I'm gonna keep beating here. I don't know how many I'm gonna do, maybe 10 or 12. We'll see here in a minute. Okay, it's fraying. I may have to wet it again. Yep. And pull it out. There it goes. Okay, let me keep moving. Eep. Bit. Baby, you can't can it come up here. I'm sorry, baby. She's always wanting to come in here when I'm working. She loves it in here when I'm working. She loves to sit in my lap. Which can present a problem sometimes. <laughs> but you know, I love my kitties. Let me see here. 
I'll put a few more on. Let me count them. You can do it any way you want. All right, I'm going to do a few more. Turn my horse hair here, turn it a little bit. It keeps flipping on me, so let me pull it out a little bit and try to shape it. Let me wet my tip again. <clears throat> Come on, baby, get on there. The little holes are so tiny. Oh, wait a minute. I gotta get another bead. How in the world? I need some more copper beads. <laughs> of course. <laughs> there are some small hole copper beads mixed in with my large hole copper beads. Of course they are. So let me get a few more. <laughs> let me check the holes. Who knows how that happened. Uh, as so it goes with beading. Uh, that won't work. Yeah, get in there, baby. Okay, there it is. Now I'm getting ready to put my bone on. Let me twist it. Slide this through. If it doesn't slide through, you may have to ream it out. Let me wet it a little bit more and see if this works. Oh, wait. Wait. Ah, that one needs to be reamed out. I'll be back. Okay, I had to ream out some bone. Ah, uh, anyway, I'm coming down here with the silver and I decided to flank the um, top of the bone with copper and then put the uh, turquoise on the bottom and then another bead. So on this side, I'm going to do all copper and then I'm gonna flank it with a silver, the bone with a silver. Uh, doing the opposite of what I did on the other side. It just gives it interest. And um, it's not predictable. So here we go. Let me thread these little guys. That one had too small of a hole. All right, that one works. I'm all about adding interest and unpredictability. Um, a lot of times when I'm doing something. That little hole seems small there. I don't know what the problem is right here. Some are smaller than others. But I'm rocking on here, so let's keep moving. Turn my hair so it'll be going the right direction while I'm working. I cannot wait to get this finished. It's going to be so pretty. I'm so excited. All right. Well. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> oh well. <laughs> he is going to love the fact that he's going to have to fix the audio oh my gosh i'm so sorry ken i really am sorry honey i'm <laughs> i'm sorry oh he's such a good man he just humors me so much all right i don't know how many i've got let me count here all right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, three more. If you're wondering what I'm doing every time I pick it up, I am wetting the end of this uh, thread right here. I'm wetting the end every time I pick it up and take it out of the screen, if you're wondering, just to make sure the beads will go over it easily. Last one. All right. And then I want a 
uh, the large silver bead right here. Ah. All right. Come on, baby, get in there. Here it is. And the piece of bone. I am going to use the one that I used on the other. Okay. And then I want the turquoise. And one more of those six millimeter silver beads on the end. Okay. So here we are with this. I told you guys this wasn't a fast project. It takes time doing this stuff. So this is what it should look like at this juncture. This is where you should be. If you're doing trying to do this, this is where you should be. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my jump ring right here to the top right through this loop right here. And that might take just a minute. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> All right, let me go here. I'm going to open it up fairly wide. And I'm going to try to hook the majority of the hair in there. You may have to work with it. And you may not get all of it in there. That's the other thing, too. But if you get the majority of it in there, you'll be okay, I think. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Almost got it. Some of this stuff you just have to work with the way it is. Well, I saw the end of it. I want to make sure I'm still in the camera, too. Well, where is the end of it? I lost it. There it is. Well, oh. Nope. <laughs> Oh, there it is. Oh, oh. The first one I did for the example was 100% easier. Of course it was. Let me start over. Let me start over here just a second. Let me go at it at a different angle. Let me go at it at this angle. And I may have to open it up just a little more. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. All right, I got it. Now I'm going to close this up. And you may have a hair or two sticking out, and that's okay. You'll be fine. You'll be just fine. All right, I'm trying to make sure that it is actually closed. And yes, it is. Press it down just a hair. There we go. All right. So you got your hook on there like that. I'm going to let you finish that. I'll be back with the next step. All right. The next process is to take your deer hide or whatever you're going to use. I like to use deer hide because it's flexible and you can move it around very easy. You're going to run it through the top of your jump ring. Pull it through. Okay, I pulled it through. I'm going to make a knot in it. At the top, just an overhanded knot, nothing fancy. OK, 
I am pulling it pretty tight. All right, so it should look like that. When you're ready, okay. And what I'm about to do now is I'm gonna make, I'm gonna cut the leather where it's even on both ends at an angle because you're gonna thread it through the cone. So I've got both ends cut at an angle. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I like cut at an angle. I have this big, massive needle, and you can see the hole in it is huge. Can you see that? Oh my goodness, it is huge. So <laughs> it's big enough for this little three millimeter leather. So I'm going to run it through the needle. And you can use anything that's uh, big enough to hold your leather, obviously, or whatever it is you're using the thread with back up through the cone. Get in there, baby. You know, it's so funny. I'll do something prior to showing you guys how to do it. And then when I get on here to show you guys how to do it, <laughs> there's always something that goes wrong. All right. So now I've got this threaded like so. And I am going to take my cone. What did I do with my, I put my cone up thinking I was, I'm going to take my cone. I am going to run this through the wide end out the top like that and I'm going to pull the leather through like that and I'm pulling it all the way up I'll take it off now I can do it by hand and I'm pulling it through pretty tight so it should look like that when you're done should be just like that. Okay. So I'm pulling it up as tight as I can get it in there. And the other thing I like to do, you don't have to do this, but I like to do this. The cone, let me show you here, is at an angle. It, it's kind of um, cut at an angle like that because, you know, it's round and then they roll it. It's like a lid top or a top or a lid to something. Uh, it used to be tobacco uh, decades ago. And they're round, and when you curve it, it makes an angle. So what I try to do is whatever the front of the necklace is going to be, I try to get the long angle down in the front. That way, you know, it just looks a little better. So I turn it this way instead. I hope that helps. You can turn yours any way you want to, but that's what I do with mine. Okay, and that way the, the all the beadwork is in the front. So I'm pulling it as tight as I can. I'm going to make a uh, knot in it after I put on a decorative bead. Let me even this up again. It helps to thread your bead if your uh, leather is even. And this is the eight millimeter large copper bead. So it's down on the end like so. And then I'm going to tie uh, an overhanded knot, but I'm going to tie it onto the necklace. Duh. <laughs> okay, so I'm coming back here to the necklace part. Let me move all this out of the way so we'll have a little room. I'm going to tie a knot here and then tie it onto the necklace.
turn it make sure I've got everything going the right direction I just have to spot it all the time to make sure I'm going the right way all right then I'm going to tie it on to the leather itself down here in the bottom where all the beads are I'm going to tie it right in the middle Tie it pretty tight. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. And then you'll have these two left over right here. And we'll come back and do some bead work on these later when we decide what we want to do. Okay, got me a little bit of water there. So this is where we're headed at this juncture. I'm going to move the rest of the beads down. I'm gonna tighten this up some like it should be. Yes. Trying to make sure everything's even. All right. Let's see here what we've got. Do I need to move something around or not? Okay. I love it when a plan works. Okay, so we're even up here on the top. This came out even. The beads came out even up here. That means we got our horsehair on right smack in the middle. And that's exactly what you want to do. Now, before we finish off the top, we got to finish off this little section down here. So we're going to take our little clamp off. We're going to push the beads up in, you know, if there's any uh, space left in here, push the beads up into the cone. And then you're just going to tie an overhanded knot down here on the bottom. Very simple, nothing, nothing major. And what I like to do is I like to take a needle or something and press it so I can pull that down there right on the end. It just helps to pull the knot down. Let's tie the rest of it on there. I know this is probably hard to see. Hopefully Ken can zoom in on it. All right, and I'm tying it very, very tight. Okay. Going to do the same thing over here. Take your clamp off. Push the beads up into the cone so you don't have any uh, space down here. Push the beads up. Okay. Tie an overhanded knot down here on this end. Let me get my needle so I can make sure I can pull it down there right next to the bead itself. There we go. Finish the knot off. Okay, that's it. So it should look like that at this juncture. Then you're going to clip off the excess down here. Now don't make it so short that it you lose your knot, okay? So don't make it too short. All right. Then you're going to take some E6000, a gel super glue, or a jeweler's glue, and you're going to dot the very ends of these knots down here so that they don't come unraveled. Get my magnifying glass so I can see this very, very gingerly. And I'm just dotting it on the end like that. If this was a sinew, I would burn it, but it's not. So. Okay. 
Okay, let me cover this up. I'm using my finger to dot it. Get the excess off so I don't glue my fingers together. <laughs> Like I glued my foot to my car door one time. <laughs> God, that's a story. I'll have to tell you sometime. <laughs> anyway, okay. So, <laughs> oh, geez, life, life. <laughs> okay, so this is kind of what your your project should look like if you're trying to do something similar to what I am doing. This is where we are. I'm trying to decide what I want to do here. So in the meantime, we'll go to the front and finish that and then come back and decide on that. We are at the tail end of this project. Oh my. Okay, so what we're going to do next is the end up here at the top. This necklace is pretty long, so there is no clasp needed for this one, and that was intentional. Um, so what, what we're going to do next is I am going to do a small half knot right here and right here. I want it to pull tight, so I'm going to get something here to help me with that. I'm going to push it down with my finger like so. Okay, so it looks like that right there. And then I'm going to do the other side. And because leather is, uh, is you know, can produce tension, a lot of tension, so you don't have to worry about knots like this coming undone um, because of the, the type of fabric that it is. Leather is just wonderful okay so we've got both ends knotted you can see that right there and then i'm going to do my finish off beads and remember i had those those three they were eight millimeter holes in those these are copper they got these beautiful little crosses on them too i don't know if you can see that or not i'll try to turn it where you can see it and hold my hand still so ken can see them but there's got these really cool crosses on them. And I thought, oh, wow, I would love that as a finish off. So here is what we're going to do. We are taking all three beads. And we are going to string them on one side of the leather at the top. So they're all three on one right here. Then you're going to take the leather from the opposite side and run it back through going the other way. So there's one right there. And here is number two. I'm pulling the leather back through. And number three. Pull it up. Okay, so now I'm going to try to make sure that everything is even. So I'm pulling it tight so I can see where my knots are and make sure everything's lined up. I need a little tweaking here and a little tweaking there. So I'm trying to determine how long I want it to be here. So I want to make sure I don't make it too long or too short. So uh, everything looks even. After I pull everything tight, you can see all the knots and everything are even. Let me tweak this just a smidge. Okay. So we've got it there. Yes. Yay. Now you're going to do the same knots that at the... I can't talk. Let me start over. This little knot right here, you're going to do it right there. <laughs> that little knot right there. That's all. A little overhanded knot, nothing fancy, um, but you can do it however you want to. This part of it right here, you can either cut it off like what I'm going to do, or you can beat it. If you want extra beading on the tail end hanging down your back, 
that would be absolutely beautiful here. You can do that. You can actually make it longer if you want uh, that as well. But I have done things where beading hangs down the back. It's beautiful. So, but you can do it however you want to. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go back and tie my knots right here. All right, I am back here. I'm clipping one side of the leather where I've pulled it so I don't lose the tension in there when I make my knot on this side. Um, it's just helpful. I'm doing that knot, just a basic, it's actually half a knot. I'm gonna take a needle here and put it in because it helps me to pull the knot right down to the bead. It's amazing how helpful it is. So I get that one done. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna do this side. Let me take these off and set them over here. Okay, I'm just gonna do an, one little overhanded loop is all I'm doing, nothing fancy. Got it there, take my needle, put it next to the bead and pull. There you go. And there it is. Okay, got it in there, it's pretty tight. I think I got just enough space in there that the beads can move around just a little bit in there and that's what I wanted. I don't want anything to buckle. Look at aren't those pretty. These uh, beads have little crosses on them. They're so pretty. Just love them. All right. At this point I'm going to clip off my excess leather because I'm not going to beat it down the back. This time, I'm just going to leave a clean uh, so a man or a woman can wear this. If it was just for a woman, I probably would have beaded it down the back. But look how pretty. We've got it knotted off. Beautiful ending at the top with the copper. All right. <laughs> this is exciting. Let's move down here to the end where the horse hair is. And I've got another couple of pieces of um, deer hide here that I've tied on to give it a little bit more decoration. So I've got one finishing bead right there at the top that both strands are going through right there. I'm going to separate the strands out like that. And I'm going to bead on each one of these sides in order to put the cone on. The little small jingle cones is what we're gonna be working with. Uh, okay. Let me pull some more on here. Oh my, it's the mic thing again. Oh my. <laughs> gonna kill me. Oh my goodness, I keep forgetting about the microphone. It's not my top priority. All right, so here we go. When you're working with leather and things like this, it just takes a little getting used to if you're not used to it. It is a totally different animal to work with. It is beautiful, but it's a different thing to work with. All right, so I'm continuing to bead a little bit here. Let me pull this through. I don't have nails, so it's kind of hard sometimes. Sometimes you have to twist them and they'll slide on. Okay, now, let me get this other side here. And uh, sometimes I do more beads on one side than I do the other. But anyway, the cones here are going to go on these two pieces of leather. And if you'll notice, uh, one end is smaller than the other end. I think you can see it right there, okay. We're gonna beat it through the small end, the piece of leather. We're gonna start there because we're gonna pull it up to the last bead you put on there, just like that. Let me do the other side. 
like that. And it's, you're trying to accent the big cone in the middle. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist it just a little bit to tighten it up at the top like we did the big cone earlier. Let me twist this one just a little. Okay, so we've got them there and I'm going to pull it up here like that. Okay, now you're going to take these flat nose pliers right here and we are going to go in here and we're going to flatten the top of the cone to hold it onto the leather. Oops, hang on. Let me get my magnifying glass. I got to make sure I'm on the seam. Uh, there's a seam that runs down the cones where they've folded them over. Let's see if I can point to it. I'm not sure if you can see it or not in the camera, but there's a little seam running right there. And what you want to do is you want to clamp it on top of the seam just like that. Then we're going to move over here on this side. I'm going to pull it down where the beads are tight. Find my seam right there. And I am going to clamp it on the top of the seam. Like so. All right. And let me open this up because I tightened it just a little too much on the bottom. I want a little wider bottom on it. So let me just open that up just a smidgen. And here we go. See, I don't know if you can see it or not in the camera, but it's it's flat right there. Okay. Other side. Nice and flat. This would hold it on. Now, you can leave these leather pieces here if you want to. You can leave that. You can bead it further down if you want to to have extra beads. Um, I usually cut mine about with a little bit hanging out of about maybe a half an inch hanging out of the bottom for decoration. Well, can't hold on to it. <laughs> ah, okay, so there's mine. And so that part is finished. Now let's go down here and we're getting ready to trim your tail. <laughs> okay, so pull the hair down, grab it just gingerly pull it down and you can see all the excess right here that we've got and go with the grain of the hair because this one's been hanging so it's got a certain direction it's going but i'm going to just trim and don't get in a hurry doing this because you want to kind of shape the bottom of it as you're going and you're pretty much cutting one hair at a time and let me pull it out here and just see. All right. I see some more stragglers, so to speak. And we'll clip this end and shape this end up from the back now. So you're going to look at it from all angles. Just like when you get your own hair cut, you know, the person cutting your hair looks at it from every angle looking for stray hairs and that's exactly what you're doing here keep smoothing it out with your hand to see if anything pulls out there's a crazy one right in there and you can see some sticking up so you're going to take your scissors and just slide it under one hair at a time there you go just one hair at a time slide it under the scissors and go up and clip. There's a few crazies on here. Let me smooth it a little bit more. It's looking looking a lot better. I see one or two more crazies. And let me get these. You can see that one hanging out right there. Bam. Bam. Okay. And I see one right in there. Just take your time doing it. Don't get in a hurry. And you can trim after you've finished it as it sits and gets used to the what it's wrapped in. You may have another one or two pop out, but just shape it with your hand. And if it needs to be clipped, then just clip the extra off. Okay, let me move everything out of the way because I think we're finished. Yay! 
So exciting. Look at all these hairs. <laughs> oh my, y'all. Look, look, look. You did it. Oh my. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, I'm so excited. My heart is singing. There's a crazy right there. I told you. <laughs> oh my, look at this. Tibetan turquoise with black carved bone, copper brass, silver, with a horsehair finish. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited about this. I hope you enjoy it. I have loved it. See you at the next project. Bye. Thank you.